So in this video, I'm going to be installing the Linux Nix OS in a Dell desktop computer. So this is Nix OS website. So I'm going to download the operating system. I'll click on download. So I'm going to be downloading the graphical ISO image. And this installation ISO image contains the graphical Nix OS installer as well as the desktop environment. So there's GNOME desktop environment and there's the Plasma desktop environment. So I'm going to choose the Plasma and I'm going to choose the one with the Intel AMD. So the size of the ISO is about 2.4 gigabytes. So I'm going to download also Etcher and this is going to create the bootable USB drive. I'm going to click on download Etcher. And here you can choose the installer. There's for Windows and also Mac and Linux. I'll click on Windows installer. So this is the ISO image and this is the Etcher EXE file. So I'm going to open up Etcher. Click flash file file. I'll choose the NixOS ISO file. Click open. Click select target. So this is the USB drive. It's about 16 gigs in size. And I'll click on select one. So I'll click on flash. So the USB drive was created successfully. So now I'm going to take this USB drive and boot up the Dell desktop computer. So I am in the Dell BIOS. I want to make sure that secure boot is disabled. So I'm going to restart the computer. So I restarted the computer and booted up from the USB drive. So there are some options here to run the installer. I'm going to choose the first option. So this is the welcome page. So here it is a drop down tab and here you can choose your language. I'm going to leave it as American English. Click next. So it already detected where I'm located in New York. Uh, you can change the region here and you can also change the city or zone here. I'll click next. So here is where you have to choose your keyboard model. It's already set at English US. And also here you can type here to test your keyboard. I'm going to click next. So you have to input your name and also a username to log in. I'm going to type John. I'm going to use the same name to log in. I'll type a password. So this password has to be more than six characters long. So there are two options here. Log in automatically without asking for the password and use the same password for the administrator account. I'm going to check use the same password for the administrator account. Click next. Now here is where you choose your desktop environment. So here's a whole list. There's known Plasma, XFCE, Cinnamon, and there's even no desktop. So you can click on each one and it gives you a preview how it will look. I'm going to choose Plasma and here's a description of Plasma. I'll click next. So NixOS is fully open source, but it also provides software packages with on free licenses. So it says if you check this box, software installed might have additional end user license agreement. So I'm going to check this box, allow on free software, click next. So here's where you can partition your hard drive. So if you have more than one hard drive, you can select it here. I only have one hard drive. It's a 256 gigabyte hard drive. So there are some options here. Install alongside. The installer will shrink a partition to make room for NixOS. You can replace a partition. Erase the disk. Erase the disk will delete everything in the hard drive and only install NixOS. And this is manual partitioning. So I'm going to choose erase entire disk. And there's a drop down tab here. There's no swap, swap, no hibernate. And there's also swap with Hibernate. I'm going to leave it as no swap. Click next. So this is a summary of all the settings that you have chosen and check. Location. This is the keyboard. The on free software. Partition setup. I'm going to click install. So this computer is connected by the Ethernet cable. And it's a Dell computer. So it must be connected to the Internet to download packages. So it's installing the Nix OS. So it says it's all done. I'm going to check this box. Restart now. Click done. I'm going to remove the USB drive. I'm going to choose the fullest option. Okay, so I'm going to log in. So this is the Plasma desktop environment. So I'm going to change this background. I'll just right click configure desktop on wallpaper. 
So I'm going to choose this small paper. So this is the taskbar. This is the application launcher. And you can see here, there's utilities. And you got the key, text editor, emoji, the letter, archive tool, key write, text editor. So this is spectacle, a screenshot capture utility. This is the systems folder, then the file manager, the console terminal. This is the key wallet manager, menu editor, system monitor. This is the settings. So Ocula is the document viewer. This is multimedia. So Firefox is installed by default. This is a graphic. This is development. This is all applications. So these are a list of all the applications that are installed. So the next icon is the systems settings. And here is where you can configure appearance. Is the application style, plasma style, colors, window decorations, the fonts, icons, cursors, font management. This is a splash screen. This is the workspace behavior, and here you can change the settings here. Desktop effect. This is the screen edges. Touch screen gestures, if you have a touch screen. Screen locking, yeah, you can configure this. These are the virtual desktop. And you can add more desktop here. This is the activities. So this is the Windows management. This is the task switcher. So this is the shortcuts. If you want to create a shortcut, for example, system settings. So this is startup and shutdown, auto start, background services, desktop sessions. Here you can configure that. This is the search. I click on notifications. This is under personalization, notification. And here this can be configured. There's users. And here I can add more users. I just have to click on add new user. And the account type can be administrator or standard. I'll click on regional settings. So you can change the language here also. Change time, currency measurements. This is the KDE wallet. So on, this is a network sections. These are the connections. And here you can configure a static IP address. You can change your IP address here. I'll click settings. You can configure a proxy settings here. Connection preferences, SSL preferences. This is the hardware section, input devices. This is the display and monitor. So I can change the resolution from here. I'll click on audio. This is the power management. This is the printers and you can add new printers here. This is removable storage. And this is about the system. So this is the file manager folder here. I'm going to close this. And these are the folders, desktop downloads, music pictures. You can open the terminal from here. I can create a new folder. I'll click OK and I created a new folder. I can drag this folder to the desktop. Select move here, copy here, link here. I'm going to move it. So this is the web browser Firefox. So on the right side, we have the clock. I can right click and I can adjust the date and time. I can also add widgets and these are the widgets. There's also a search box where I can type in whatever widget I would like to download. So this is the status and notifications. So if I right click the taskbar, I can get these menu options. I can enter into edit mode and this is how edit mode looks. I can add widgets. I can add spacer. This is the panel height. There's more options. And on the top bar, I can manage desktops and panels, configure display settings. I can also add widgets here, configure desktop and wallpaper.
So I want to add some more packages. I want to add Google Chrome. I want to add Vim, Emacs, LibreOffice, WGET. So I'm going to open the terminal app. I'm going to type console. I'm going to open this much bigger. So I'm going to go to the configuration file. I'm going to type sudo. I'm going to try Vim. I'll type the password. So Vim is not installed. So I have to use the nano command. So I'm going to scroll down until I see the packages. So it's here. So the packages are Firefox and Kate. So here you can configure and make changes. For example, bootloader, network host name. You can enable sound, you can configure that. So these are the list of packages. So I'm going to add a Vim. I'm going to add Chromium. I'm going to add GIMP. I'm going to add WGET. I'm also going to add Emacs and LibreOffice. So I'm going to save this configuration file. I'll hit Control O on the keyboard, hit Enter. So I'm going to exit out of this configuration file. I'll hit Control X, hit Enter. So now I'm going to type this command, sudo nixos rebuild switch. I'll hit Enter, type my password. So it should be installing the packages. So I'm going to restart the system. I'm going to log in. So there's Chrome. Chromium was installed. So Emacs was installed. I click on all applications. So LibreOffice was installed. So GIMP was installed. So I'm going to type console. I'll click on console terminal. I also install Vim. Vim was installed successfully. So the packages that I installed in the configuration file was successful. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I thank you for watching and I thank you for subscribing.